Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, Dave Madden. Today's date is Monday the 8th of October and the time is just gone 11.05 British summer time. Uh, we've had a major sell-off in European equity markets this morning for a couple of reasons. Uh, first of all, overnight out of China. Uh, we did have some positive um, service figures out of China overnight, but that was overshadowed by the fact that the Central Bank of China cut the reserve requirement ratio for the fourth time this year. And this sends out a quite, a, quite a negative message. Essentially, the, the Chinese central bank are essentially stating that uh, banks that operate in China need to uh, can actually uh, reduce the amount of cash they have uh, in their have, have reduced their cash position in relation to, to the size of the loans in a bid to actually boost economic growth. Hopefully, the idea, the aim would be for China, for, for, for Chinese banks to increase the, the rate of lending as a way of boosting the economy. This can be seen as an expansionary policy, but in a scenario like this, where they're in a trade spat with the United States and their economy is slowing down, it's seen as a sign of weakness. And it's also seen as a sign that they could be uh, digging themselves in for the long haul in terms of the trade spat with Washington, D.C. So we saw a large sell-off in Asia overnight on the back of that. It's also translated into a fairly sizable sell-off in here in Europe this morning. Uh, sticking with Europe, uh, Italy remains to be in the news for all the wrong reasons. Uh, the Italian government is it kind of appears that it's going to be at long, it's, going to, it's, going to, it's going to be on a collision course with Brussels because the Italian government wants to increase its budget deficit, uh, wants to actually increase um, spending as a way of actually hopefully reinvigorating the economy, but that is likely to lead to additional borrowing. Um, so and the Italian economy already has a colossal amount of, of debt, and they're potentially looking to increase uh, to the amount to the amount of debt, and that would actually and that's actually kind of shaking investor confidence. Um, Matteo Salvini, one of the deputy prime ministers of Italy, uh, has confirmed that he's no intention of taking Italy out of the euro, but he has stated, uh, he has asked that rating agencies be fair when they deal with when they re when they review um, Italy's uh, uh, debt rating. And the fact that he has kind of state that suggests that he is a bit nervous himself. So once again, it's seen as a sign of weakness. So we're seeing the usual uncertainty uh, in in the Italian uh, stock market, and that's also creeping out. To the wider eurozone and European equity markets. So they're the kind of the big stories and the big headlines um, for today. Uh, taking a look at the week ahead, and the week ahead can be found on our platform, uh, on our website. Uh, rather, if you go to cmcmarkets.com and then under news and analysis, you will find the uh, the latest week ahead article. Um, it's going to be quiet, uh, relatively quiet for for the rest of today and tomorrow, Tuesday. Looking ahead to Wednesday, we have UK manufacturing and industrial production. On Thursday, we have full year figures from W. H. Smith. Also on Thursday, we have US CPI. This is probably going to be one of the more important uh, announcements of the week. Uh, one of the kind of recent stories has been out of the US is that uh, bond yields are, are on the rise in the United States. There's increased speculation that the Federal Reserve are going to continue down their path of economic of monetary tightening. Should we see a, a fairly decent inflation figure from the US, it could, it could, it could add fuel to the fire or could add weight to the argument that the Federal Reserve are going to continue down their path of monetary tightening. And should that be the case, we could see a continue higher, uh, push higher in US government bond deals. We could also see a push higher in the US US dollar itself. Should that, and that, an issue with the, US, the rise in the US dollar is that could hurt uh, emerging market uh, emerging market currencies, uh, the South African rand, the Indian rupee, the Turkish lira. These, these are all currencies which are under pressure. A rising uh, US dollar and a potentially rise in US government bond yields would potentially put further pressure on their already struggling economies. That's also playing into the setup we're seeing global equity markets. Uh, looking at also on Thursday, uh, Walgreens Boots Alliance uh, fourth quarter figures out of the United States. Uh, we have on Friday we have trade figures out of China. That's going to be uh, of, of importance after, after the reasons I laid out that the Chinese economy is, is cooling. On top of that, they're locked in a trade war, a trade dispute with the United States. Uh, and any signs that China uh, has, continues to have a large imbalance of, uh, in terms of a trading, trading imbalance with the U.S., who can only add fuel to the fire uh, that, that Donald Trump may look to actually slap further tariffs on Chinese imports. And also, lastly on Friday, we have third quarter figures from a couple of big Wall Street banks, Citigroup and J.P. Morgan. So I'll take a look now um, at a few, a few of the uh, popular markets. Starting off the FTSE 100, like I said, um, the the Eurozone, European equity markets are, are firmly in the red today, um, and, and the FTSE is uh, is no different. Uh, sticking a look here at, at the, the price action FTSE, as you can see, for the last few sessions, the FTSE has been uh, has been pretty much in a fairly steady decline. 
turning down here to the MACD indicator, the MACD histogram, as the market was, it was driving lower, we could see a steady decline in positive momentum. And that was actually momentum that actually swung into negative territory. So the downward move we're seeing in the actual index has been confirmed by the steady well decline in positive momentum and now increase in negative momentum. So we have to be even more confident that this downward move is going to last. In terms of actually the price action, notice how it's actually below this red line here. The 200 moving average, which comes to play at 7,488. And while we, we remain south of that metric, it's likely that the outlook is going to remain bearish. Should we continue to, to drive lower from here, we could look at heading back down towards the mid early early kind of the mid September lows uh, in this area here, which comes to play in around the 7,220 region. And should we go south of that, we could be looking heading back down towards this price here, uh, the, the kind of mid October low, mid April low rather. Uh, of 7,188. Uh, moves to the upside, uh, they could run into resistance at this red line here, the eternity the moving average. And should we go beyond that um, and, and take out this high here in, in, late, in late September at 7,558? If we go beyond this area here, we could be looking any back up towards this, this yellow line here, the eternity moving average at 7,587. Mm -hmm. Take a look now at what's going on over in Germany, uh, the DAX. Like I was saying, it's a fairly big uh, sell-off uh, across the board in Europe. If you take a look um, at the price action since June, if you draw a, a, a trend line from the highs of June through the lows of July, and also through the low, to, sorry, through the highs of apologies, through the highs from the highs of June to the highs of July, uh, to the highs of September, we can see there's a fairly um, fairly decent uh, trend line resistance coming into play here. Notice how actually the, the pushback and the rally we saw in late August. Didn't even actually get quite as high after that um, trend line itself, but it has acted as resistance uh, on a couple of occasions recently uh, in in, uh, in in late September. As we have a classic series of lower lower highs, and now the market is pushing lower yet again. We're at the we're at a level uh, level this morning that not seen uh, since uh, mid September. If we continue to press on lower from here, we could be looking at retesting this area here. Uh, this uh, the, the low from um, the 11th of September, uh, 11,863. Uh, 11, and should we go south of that, we'll then we'll actually be looking at printing multi month lows. Uh, and the next area to keep an eye for from that will be this area here. Uh, level kind of in, in the uh, just, just south of 11,792. 11, this area here, notice how at the start of the year, this region did act as support. So keep an eye for this area. Uh, should we see any further moves to the downside? If you do see any kind of pullbacks, uh, bounce pushes higher, or about bounce backs rather uh, in the DAX, resistance may come into play um, in, or, in around this area here at uh, 12,250. So a bit of consolidation in around there. But we really would need to kind of break north of this trend line here, uh, which comes into play in around the 12,350 odd region. And in order to kind of snap out of this downward trend, we'd really kind of need to have a pretty sizable break above these highs here, which come into play. Which come into play uh, at 12,450, 12,460. Uh, as you can see here, because if you do continue to push lower here, we have a series of lower highs. We could be looking at a series of lower lows again. So, the, uh, for the time being, uh, it, it, while we remain south of this trend line, it's likely that that outlook is going to remain negative for the DAX. Taking a look at what's going on over in the US, uh, it is worth noting, notice, noting that today is Columbus Day in the, in the US. So, markets are open. But we may see uh, we may see a lower volatility. We may see a lower trading volume. Some uh, some traders and investors may be taking a day's holidays today. But as I said, the a New York Stock Exchange is open for business today. Um, so take a look at the at the at the, uh, the Dow Jones here. The market uh, has has retreated from its all-time high, and it's actually the last few sessions been um, in the red. We've been pushing lower. We can see here on the MACD indicator, MACD histogram, that momentum has turned negative, and that's actually increasing. So the steady increase in negative momentum, so the momentum is with the, sire, with the sellers, with the, with the bears. The, the increase in negative momentum confirms uh, the downward move we're seeing in the actual market itself. So we can be more confident that this downward, that this downward trend is going to move, it's going to continue. It's also worth pointing out, you know, we've seen a uh, major sell-off in Europe, major sell-off major sell in Asia, so the, kind of, the global sentiment for equities is quite negative. But, if, but because U.S. equities are coming from a recent, some of them an all-time high, we could be looking at uh, getting dry lower themselves. And if you do continue to push lower from here, we could really head, head back down, down towards this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, which actually kind of basically coincides with the 
26,000 mark. Uh, it's a big psychological number as well. Notice how it did, act, did manage to act nicely as support back in the middle of August, and traders would be, would be could, could view that as a sign that it may act as support again in the near term. Uh, just because a metric has acted as a kind of support or resistance in the past, there's no guarantee that it will in the future. It just makes it a, a bit more likely that it, that it could. So, uh, if the if, if the sell off in the in the Dow continues in the near term, we could see uh, the Dow heading back down towards the 26,000 mark. Given that sentiment is is quite negative, um, it might, it, it, the, the Dow may find it difficult to kind of. Uh, kick back into the kind of wider upward trend that has been in place. But if we do manage to push in higher from here, we could be looking kind of heading back up towards you know, the, the recent high, uh, just kind of shy, shy of the 27,000 area. Um, take a look now at what, what's going on in the gold market. Gold continues to be fairly uninteresting, to be perfectly honest. It keeps dancing around the kind of 1,200 mark. Uh, gold has been in a classic downward trend since April. So you've got a lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low. We've had had a reasonably decent um, bounce back since since mid August, but it hasn't really kind of managed to kind of gain much ground. It hasn't really spent much time away from the 1200 mark volatility has been quite low, and now that now they're actually kind of seeing the US dollar become stronger, we could see kind of further downward pressure on the US on the on the, on the gold market. Essentially, ultimately, why we remain below this area here, the kind of 1214 region. While we remain south of that, it's likely that, that the outlook for gold is going to remain negative. And if we do continue to kind of, if we do continue to kind of drive further south of 1200, we could really back down towards this area here, the recent low at 1180. I'm sure we go south of 1180, we could really heading back down towards the August low of 1160. Uh, any moves to the upside, if we do see a break north of 1214, then keep an eye out for this region here, uh, which comes into play at 1236. Um, sticking with the commodities theme, let's have a look now what's going on in Brent crude oil. Brent crude oil, not too long ago, was a uh, fresh, essentially a, a four-year high, which is uh, this, this um, which was only uh, last last week here. But we have seen some 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 of the, some of the ground being handed back uh, in the uh, in the oil, in the Brent crude oil market, but it's still is very much in an upward trend. It's been kind of pushing higher steadily uh, since mid mid August. So we're still very much in an upward trend. Uh, if we do continue, if we do continue to actually kind of push lower in the near term, we could look like heading back down towards the 82.50 region, this area here. And if we go south of that, we could be looking like back down towards this price here of 80 spot 89. And if we go south of that, we could be looking like back down towards 80 dollars per barrel. Um, if we do actually look to resume the kind of wider upper trend that we've actually been in. We could be looking at heading back up towards $85 a barrel and then near the kind of 87 mark, which which was the uh, just just uh, just shy of 87 was the recent high. And if we go beyond that, we'd then be looking at printing fresh, essentially four-year highs, and then traders be looking out for $88 a barrel. And it's just a lot of talk of $90 and $100, $100, $100 a barrel target for, uh, for Brent crude. Um, take a look now at WTI. It's also at a, at a fairly good run, um, WTI. But as you can see here, uh, we have also had a fairly decent sell-off um, in, 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 re in recent sessions. Taking a look at this particular candle here on the daily chart from uh, from last Thursday, Thursday the 4th of October, this candle here uh, is, appears to be a bearish engulfing. Notice how effectively the body of, of, the, of the candle here effectively uh, is uh, completely engulfs the previous day's candle. To be fair, for, for a textbook, for a textbook, for a textbook example of a, of a bearish engulfing, it would be nicer um, if the body of the candle was a bit taller and actually completely, you know, uh, uh, engulfed um, the high. The, the, the uh, apologies, completely engulfed the uh, the close of the previous um, of the previous candle. But nonetheless, it's still uh, it's still it's still it could potentially be construed as a bearish engulfing. So we could see further declines in the near term. For WTI, and if you do like to kind of drift, drift further south in WTI, we could be looking heading back down toward this area here, this line here at 72 spot 79. And if you go below that, we could be looking heading back down towards this line here in around the 71 spot 69. And if you do look to kind of resume the kind of wider upper trend that's been in play for WTI, we could be looking heading back up towards 75 and up towards the recent high of just north of 77. And then if you go beyond that, we then be kind of printing fresh multi year highs. And just be looking now for 78 and up towards 80 dollars. Then take a look now. What's going on on the currency markets? 
euro versus the US dollar. So the, so the, the wider trade has been very much negative for euro versus the US dollar in the last number of months. But we did see a decent enough uh, bounce back in August. But that bounce back has now actually been called into question because it has managed to put a fairly sizable move higher. It pulled back here to a reaction low. It's pushed higher here again, heading a fresh multi multi week high in late September. But we have been drifting lower. And notice how the lows here managed to actually take out the recent kind of the lows in early to kind of mid September. So we could be looking at falling back into the wider downward trend that's, that's been in play for a number of months. As I said, a lot of speculation that the Federal Reserve are going to be are, are going to continue down the path of, of hiking interest rates. So this is very much kind of a dollar buy story. Not to mention that some of the economic indicators of the eurozone has been a bit weak. Adding to that, political uncertainty surrounding Italy as well. If we do continue to kind of push on lower, and while we remain south of this area, this this line here, um, in a kind of one spot 15.10 or one spot 15. While we remain south of that level here, we, we could look to head it back down towards the kind of 113 mark. Uh, if we do have a decent rally north of the kind of 115 or 115.10, we could look at heading back up towards this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average. Notice how it acted as both kind of support and resistance um, in, in recent weeks. And, and that, that, that metric uh, comes into play at, at 1 spot 16.34. And if we go beyond that, we could look at heading back up towards uh, one's, one's, uh, one spot kind of 17.50. After we go beyond that, we could be looking back up towards one spot 18.51. And ultimately, why we're, we're, you know, we, we really need to, need to be moving beyond uh, one spot 18.50 or 51 uh, to actually kind of be more confident that the upward trend is going to continue. And last but not least, turning our attention now to pound versus the US dollar. Similar situation, pound dollar has been in a very much down, downward, wider downward trend since August, uh, so apologies, since April, but since August we've had a, a fairly decent bounce back. It's been a bit, it's kind of a, 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 a bit choppy, but broadly speaking we've seen a kind of moves higher in the pound versus US dollar since August. So we could be looking kind of changing a bit of a comeback uh, on the pound versus the US dollar. And ultimately, while we remain north of the kind of 130 mark, the kind of psychological number, and also 130 is comfortably above this blue line here, the 50-day moving average, while we remain north of that, it's likely that we could actually get, in the near term, see a positive outlook for the pound dollar. And if we do, if we do continue to press on higher from here, we could be looking heading back towards the kind of late September high of just shy of 133. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading back up towards the early July high of of uh, one spot 33.61. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking heading back up towards the early June high of one spot 34.72. But if the market does kind of turn over on itself again, it does have a decent break below 130. We could 130. We could be looking heading back down towards this area here, uh, that early kind of early September low of one spot 28.95. And um, a break below that could bring the, uh, could bring the the, the early the, the the previous early September low at one spot 2785 into play. Just a couple of things to show you on our trading on our trading platform. Uh, market insights, which is this this tab I've displayed here. Some of the updates that we do in terms of uh, written reports gets updated to insights. This video is going to be uh, on, on insight. Um, also, it is worth it is worth pointing out that uh, throughout today, uh, various economic announcements get posted to insight. That can be found under a market pulse, which is um, on the second option here. And also keep an eye on chart form, which is this, this tab here. Uh, chart form is the under market pulse once again, and it's the third option down. And what, what, what chart form is, it's essentially a snapshot of a market and actually some analysis on the side of it as well. And that, that is updated by myself and my colleagues here at CMC Markets, but it's also accessible uh, for actually clients. If, any, 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 if you want to take a, a screenshot of a particular chart or write a few words on, on what you think the price action is going to do, we can actually begin a conversation from there. If you have any comments uh, on this video or any of the other videos that we, we, we have produced here at CMC Markets, please feel free to leave a review on Google Reviews. Uh, and that's all from me this week. Thank you very much.